United States leader, the top leadership in the United States, does not take an active role in trying to protect the U.S. from some of these dangerous exploitations that are going on and other things that are happening. Uh, it's it's so basic, but anyway, okay. I'm, I'm a little bit off. Subject. Yeah, well, no, I think I think it's a, it's a good point because uh, you know I think it's all based on. Uh, making money and commerce and the almighty dollar and you know uh, i think a lot of the, i think a lot of these people don't care because the way they look at it is well you know i'll be dead by the time we really feel the yes. effects and, and i want to be rich now <laughs> yeah you know I, I think that's really at the core of it you you got it that's it and 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 it, that's so sad you know it, it means what kind of world are they trying to leave? Don't, don't they have children that they're concerned about or nieces and nephews or somebody that they care about besides themselves? You know, well, unfortunately, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think they I think that's all they care about is themselves. And, and that and that that really raises troubling questions. You know, uh, I'm going to go into some of these articles here. I want to go through a little bit here. Um, I want to first before I do that, I want to say one more thing here on our beloved, the American coal industry. Uh, the policy here, trying to, trying to force the U.S. back under coal, even the people who would use the coal are realizing how, how dangerous it is in some cases. And they, they cannot sell coal-powering fire plants, they don't think, to the utility companies because they realize how, how uh, ecologically damaging they are and they're trying to find alternatives versus using coal. And so even though with the subsidies they're getting and all this other stuff, but the, the, the real irony comes in, they have a museum up in coal country in West Virginia. And what do you think powers the museum? What power do you think they use to power that museum? Oh, I have no idea. You would think coal, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, you would think. But no, it's solar. <laughs> ah, well, that's great. Yeah, so... At least, at least someone who built a museum saw the future and didn't see the past. So, let's hope more people wake up like that. I want to go into uh, this is political, but it it goes to the, to the background of what we're facing to get people to realize the climate change is real. I want to I want to go through this and explain what happened here. Uh, you know, when uh, Trump took office. His big thing was drain the swamp, okay, and his and he goes to these rallies, and if you listen to some of the propaganda at his rallies, it makes people who are into ecology, into science, just shudder at some of the and the people standing there and clapping and yelling for this stuff. It it, it is mind boggling, and I really hope that some people running against these who can educate people will run these in their commercials against and, and, and expose this hypocrisy about what draining the swamp means. But anyway, what I'm going to go into, the, here's what, uh, this is from the uh, New York Times, incidentally, and I've read, read a lot of columns of other patients, and I'm sorry, the Washington Post, I'm sorry, not the, the Ozarks here. Anyway, um, there's a fact that resonates with a lot of Trump supporters, is, and they don't like, there's resentment with a lot of people, too, of the ecosystem of interest groups rigging the government into their favor, and corrupt officials involving uh, revolving door lobbyists, palm-greasing executives, and the network of pseudo-think tanks and analysts funded by the industries trying to pass off propaganda as impartial research. Oh boy, it's, can I can go? I can spend hours talking about that. In other words, those who use who who use money and access to accumulate more money and access, and haven't we talked about that before? Rob from the poor to give to the rich, exploit the the immigrant population in the country, pay them minute wages, while we put more and more profits into the pockets of the people, and that goes into the into the situation of other areas too. This all goes back to the climate, where I'm going to get here too, too. But anyway, one of the most recent things that they did, uh, I'm going to summarize some of this too, because I'll be in here talking this for too long, probably, if I didn't. Uh, the, you know, they have an agency. That it's called, uh, let me get the right, correct name, the USDA, okay, United States, uh, okay. On July, okay, what, what happened they they wanted they often get reports put out. The ERS uh, 
It's called the uh, it's the ERS is arguably the world's premier agricultural economic agency. It produces critical numbers that farmers rely on when deciding when to plant and how much and and how to price, how to manage risk and other stakeholders, uh, the public. Officials used to evaluate agriculture policy. However, because it is independent, the ERS produces research that the Trump administration sometimes finds inconvenient, such as who has really been been helped by his tax cuts, how climate change might affect agriculture, or how his trade war hurts farmers. The administration administration's solution to these inconveniences blowing up the agency altogether. Mm-hmm. In, in June, the Agriculture Department informed employees of the ERS and the National Institute of Food and Agriculture, which manages $1.7 billion in scientific funding, that they were moving to Kansas City region, p- precise location to be determined. Employees had 30 days to decide whether to uproot their families or lose their jobs. As of July 26, only 116 employees agreed to relocate, and according to the USDA spokesperson, which is about 20% of, their, uh, of those initially asked, representatives from the Employees Union and the American Federation of Government Employees, and we know people who are active members of that, don't we, Dan? Yep. Okay. And told me they expect, this is telling me they're referring to the calmest writing this, they expect even fewer ultimately to move since some employees who said they relocated and researching for other opportunities. The Trump administration is celebrating. Get this, this is what we just talked about the rallies. You heard about Drain the Swamp, acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, and said to the chairs of Republican Party Gala last week while resonating the departures of scientists, statisticians, and economists. What you probably haven't heard is what we are actually doing. Maltavini's comments, alas, have can cause some problems for the USDA, which officially justified the abrupt move as a way to attract and retain talent, being closer to the stakeholders and reduce costs by moving the less expensive city. That was their initial excuse, because that everyone didn't believe that they knew what the truth was. The explanation was always laughable, of course. The union was told to re- the relocation will require three separate moves from D.C. To, to current temporary offices, then to another temporary office, and finally to a permanent location. Right now, the managers are being flown back and forth from Washington to Kansas City for two-and-a-half-day shifts to oversee a handful of new hires. None of, the, none of them seems particularly cost-efficient or talent-friendly. Days after Mulvaney's remarks, a new, a new report from the USDA's Inspector General found the move might have violated budget laws since Congress never appropriated relocation funds. Huh. So what else is new? When they're, they're, the White House is not. How many other laws have they violated? You know. Yeah. As well as an internal department regulations, which require require congressional approval. Many departures also look likely to, to leave the IRS unable to produce reports required by statute, in other words, by law, of course. Yep. We, do re- we do research that's apolitical, unbiased, comprehensive, and good quality, an, EIS, an ERS employee told me, under conditions of anonymity due to fears of retaliation. <laughs> yes, what else is new there? Whistleblowers, yeah. We're not, we're not there. We're not, when we're not there, Congress relies on other sources of information, think tanks and lobbyists who, who's ever got the biggest donor. That's why they listen to, listen to, because there's no authoritative source for them to go to. And that's why the ERS is supposed to have been there, for an authoritative source, versus having to rely on lobbyists. Well, the point being here, they're destroying the very system that, that helps the agricultural system in this country and with actual science. And again, it's the war on science, and the war is there's there's so many the the war on immigration, the war on on, on science, and it it just goes on and on and on. But it it is staggering when you stop to think about how much damage has been done here in these cases. 
I want to go. I want to go back again. Bend to the climate change and what this is doing to us. In the state of Florida, do you think this ever happened in Florida, where, the, where people were fired and who were managing and, and producing facts that were inconvenient? Yeah, well, I imagine it has. And, you know, I think this is something um, maybe we should uh, take up next week because we are running out of time. Oh, my gosh, yes, and I didn't even get yep. to anywhere near all the issues. <laughs> so next week we're going to be spending most of the time on more of the problems that are causing the problem because the problems are so massive. Okay, so uh, I'll wrap up here, and thank you for having me. I've got a lot more problems to go through or causing this issue to happen, and then we'll go on to the solution. So Yeah, no, this is great stuff. I think I personally believe that climate change is uh, the greatest threat to uh, humanity right now, and I'm hoping that, you know, people will wake up, so. Uh, I'm glad you're uh, bringing this to our listeners. Thank you, Dan. Yep. And on that note, we'll be back next week. Yep. On that note, to our listeners, you have been listening to the Coastal Rainbow Forum, and we hope that you will tune in again next week. 